Hey everyone, if you've been following along, you already know that we've been developing the Dark Arrow 1 kit aircraft designed for speed, range, and efficiency. We're in the prototyping phase and lately we've been focused on main gear construction, electrical wiring, and wingtip details. Let's dive into those projects more in today's video. Today we're going to be creating main gear components for the Dark Arrow 1 aircraft. I'm holding up a section of stock that's going to turn into the final part. I thought it'd be interesting to show you start to finish going from this to a final component like this. So there's an upper drag link and a lower drag link for the main gear. This is the upper drag link. There's the left side and the right side. So we have both those machined out uh, right here. So let's take a look at going from this part to a final part. We'll start here over at the mill. We're in front of our Tormach. This is a three axis mill. There's a lot of different ways to machine out a component like this. Probably the most common way to do it when you have a setup like this is to have a left vise and a right vise and use those vises to hold your stock. I don't have two vise and I don't wanna order another one, but I did have some existing stock laying around. So we're gonna make our own vise. So that's what this looks like. On the back portion here, we use this to machine out our upper drag links. And in the front portion here, we're gonna use this little pocket here to machine out these guys. So this works for both the first setup, which is machining out the top of it, and then flipping it over, and it's dropping down into this slot here, and that'll allow us to machine out the material on the back side of it. So that's the process. We're gonna get right into it, get this thing set up on here, and get the machining going. We're all finished up with the first setup. You can take a look here at the part and it's kind of emerging now from the stock. So what we're gonna do next, I'm gonna take these little clamps off, uh, flip the thing 180 degrees and then we'll finish off the material on the back side, and we'll be all done with this part. So started like this, machined it down to that. And there's a little lip of material on the bottom. So when we flip it over, that little lip will be exposed to the end mill and be able to machine it out and make the other side look just like this side. Oh, pretty close. <laughs> little cartoon sketch. Nice. So that drops down and then three clamps go here to hold it in place for the second setup. Lower drag link is all finished up. We missed getting some footage machining the second side, but it's just a mirrored image of the uh, the other side that we showed earlier. So this is what it looks like, all finished up. And I have the stock to do the other lower drag link. I have the Heimer on here getting my zero point. And now that I have that established, I'm gonna replicate what I did to machine out this one. And then we'll be all done with these and we'll move on to the next part. Keegan's been making machine components on the mill. And while he's been doing that, I've been staging all the finished parts on the, mill, uh, on the router here, trying to get everything ready to assemble it. I'll talk through some of the more interesting components that we've been pulling together lately. I talked about this part in the last video. This is the strut bracket, we're calling it, and this allows us to attach the drag link here and the gas shock here on this bracket so we can transfer the loads from those components into the strut. There's a left hand and right hand version of this. This goes on the right side of the aircraft. There's a left hand. Ideally, we'd have them uh, symmetric so you can make two of the same part, but sometimes there's no way around that. So this part, there's a left hand and right hand version. However, the drag links, we were able to make symmetric. So these are the, the full drag link assembly with the upper and lower drag links attached. So they're symmetric, which allows us to make just two of the same part, 
just duplicate that and then it doesn't really matter if you swap them around they're the same thing which is good for economies of scale in a production environment it's a lot easier to make two of the same part than a left hand or right hand version another good example of a symmetric part and probably the next thing we'll be machining out are these uh, strut bottoms we're calling them so these attach to the the bottom of the strut like this this is a 3d printed mock-up of what it'll look like and we do that sometimes just to, to get a feel for what it's going to be uh, whoops we're going to machine them out of a billet like this and we're actually cutting two out of the same billet and they'll be nested approximately like this so for op one we'll machine them and then cut them apart and then finish up with the rest of the operations as individual components. But these are mirror image or they're the same parts so we can just duplicate them, which is nice. I think a common thought that might come to mind when looking at all these parts is why are there so many pieces and parts in your landing gear? Why isn't it just a, a strut or a stick coming out the side of the fuselage? We actually did start with that approach, uh, a more of a strut style landing gear design, but uh, we design our landing gear to certified aircraft standards and what we found is that when we were looking at the energy absorbing capability or the requirements that we need to meet for energy absorption on a hard landing we just couldn't hit the numbers for a strut style design so we had to go to a, a little bit more advanced design which would be a trailing link with a gas shock like this so this style design has a lot more energy absorbing and a lot better damping um, that compared to a, a strut style design so we're getting all these parts together, getting ready to assemble them. And then I think the big thing everyone is wondering about is when can you put them in the airplane? That's all hinging on making a molded carbon fiber component that's gonna tie all this together. Uh, basically a carbon fiber mounting structure for all this, which is gonna allow us to join it to the fuselage. I'm working on the mold design for that and I'll have more to show on it on an upcoming video. So stay tuned for that. We're here in the cockpit and what I've been focusing on lately is getting the wiring mounted up to run it from the firewall going back to the rest of the plane. So starting with the pilot side, you'll see some of the click bonds that we had installed earlier and those hold the wiring in this path that gets it up along the edge of the fuselage. As I said in previous videos, this will get covered up so that it doesn't come in conflict with the occupants of the aircraft. But right now, our goal is just to get everything mounted so that we can get into flight testing quicker. Moving back to this section of the wiring harness, we had a bit of a challenge here in that we needed to structure the wiring in such a way to provide more clearance when the wing comes up here, since the central spar of the wing sits just below the armrest. And in order to do that, we broke the wiring bundle into four smaller bundles that make it more like a ribbon so that it sits here. And that provided the clearance we needed to get it through this obstacle. After it moves past that, it goes back to a regular click bond and P-clip and then moves through the rest of the bulkheads that way. Let's move over to the co-pilot side and I'll show you what we did there to mount the wiring. Here on the co-pilot side, Similar story, but a few different challenges. You can see we have our click bonds and P-clips mounted up uh, a little higher and in a little bit of a weird configuration here. And that's because on this side, we have our fuel lines that will run up uh, here, for instance, we have our fuel return line. And then over here, we have our fuel pump manifold that'll sit about there. So we had to route the wiring higher up so that it sat above the fuel lines. And then coming down here, we've held off on doing the final mounting of the wiring so that we can make sure it's gonna not interfere with the fuel lines when they run up through the armrest here. The next steps for getting the wiring to run after the cockpit will be to get it through the remaining bulkheads and then to mount it up in a similar fashion to what we've done here along the outside walls of the fuselage, and then ultimately connect it into our aft electronics. I have my wingtip here, and what I'm doing is I'm applying adhesive. I'm going to permanently install it to the wing. So what that involves is applying some adhesive to it. I'll get it on this wingtip surface first. I'll smooth it out, and then I'll apply it to the wing surface as well. Smooth that out, and then attach it. So last time you guys saw this setup, I was doing the work internally 
getting set up for the magnetometer. So we built a mount for that. And then I pulled wiring into here and River wired up the light to the wingtip. And then he also wired up the magnetometer connector. So once we had all of that complete, I went forward and I built the cover or assembled the little cover. So the cover is now on the tip, which is kind of exciting. So now we have a little access panel to get in here and get our uh, magnetometer in there and then also service our light if need be. So I'm going to finish applying this adhesive and then we'll be ready to permanently install the wingtip. There's a lot of tape going on here. Uh, what we like to do is apply tape in areas where we don't want adhesive to get onto. Otherwise that just adds extra weight and adds extra time to the process cleaning that up later. So the tape is really nice in that regard because it keeps the surrounding surfaces all nice and clean and free of adhesive. Once I get a bead on here, I'm going to take my key card, <laughs> my special key card, and I'm going to smooth it out and then I'm going to repeat that on the wingtip and then we'll be ready to attach the tip here. The bonding is all complete. What I'm doing now is just using strips of painter's tape to hold it in place. It's essentially serving as a clamp. There's not a good way to get a traditional clamp in here to pull it all together, so tape is the tool for the job. As far as alignment goes, what we do is just place it up. There's not an official, official alignment feature, but you can literally just run your finger over the top and bottom edge all the way around and just basically confirm with feel that it's in the right place. And since it's CNC machined, uh, it's really easy to verify that because everything fits up pretty nice. So. I'm gonna finish this up and then move on to the other wing tip. All right, so we let the tip cure overnight. I've got the tape pulled off and I wanted to throw the aileron on here quick just to see how everything matched up. Really happy with how it turned out. There's only a couple little last remaining tasks here. There's a little bit of tape residue I need to remove and then I have to match sand the tip to the wing uh, right at the interface here. Other than that, really pleased with how this turned out. That's all we have time for for this shop update, but we have a lot more coming up in our next one. So stay tuned for that. We'll catch you guys next time. Perfect.